Dear fellow coders, welcome to One Little Coder. In this applied NLP Python tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to build your own emotion classifier using a model that is available on Hugging Face Model Hub. So this model is called Emo Roberta. So the name comes from because you do emotion detection and they're using inherently a Roberta model. And this model has been uploaded by Arpan Goshal. Thanks Arpan for making this model available that we can start using it right away. And this, this is a very comprehensive page. You can read about the methodology. You can read about this course that they've got and you can also get a starter code. So this is the model that we are going to use for building our own emotion classifier. And I'm going to show you how to build this emotion classifier, text emotion detection using a Google Collab Notebook. So just to make sure that I'm using Google Collab Notebook, particularly this Google Collab Notebook, only on CPU, not on GPU. So let's get started. So the first thing that you have to do is start your Google Collab Notebook and after you start your Google Collab Notebook, just go ahead and then install Transformers. So pip install Transformers will in install Transformers. I'm installing it quiet. So pip install Transformers will install the Transformers library that is required for us to access the Hugging Face models. And after you do pip install Transformers, now the next thing is we're going to leverage the Hugging Face pipeline so there are a couple of ways you can do this thing so one you can go the traditional route where you have uh, the tokenizer and model downloaded separately and then you can do the classification but the easiest way that you can do this is you can actually import the pipeline and then do import the sentiment analysis pipeline and select the emotion detection model so instead of taking the traditional route i'm taking a different route in this case where i'm just importing the pipeline that makes it easier for me to build this in which a very few lines of python code so from transformers import pipeline and after you import pipeline the next thing is you need to specify what is the task that you're trying to do with this pipeline so there are a lot of different tasks that are available for example you can do text classification you can do text generation you can do a lot of things so but for our purpose i'm, I'm defining the task as a sentiment analysis task and then i'm detecting i'm using the model i'm telling the hugging face pipeline to do sentiment analysis using this particular model which just discussed about so as you can see after we define this we're going to define this in an object emotion and at this point it's going to download this model and it's going to make it ready for you so you can like i said you can either go with this route which is a pipeline route or you can go with the traditional route where you specifically define your tokenizer you specifically define your model and then you have to do a couple of more things which means the traditional route gives you flexibility but the pipeline route gives me speed which means i can i can do things faster with a very less number of python code just because i'm doing a demo i'm not going to deploy it anywhere so you have to take the call based on what you want to do so at this point we have the model downloaded or we have the pipeline ready at emotion so the next thing is it's quite simple we are ready to go we have to just use this emotion and then give this text like whatever you want to do for example i'm going to say i'm not sure how this is going to play out okay i'm going to run this and then see what is the output of it when I print the output of it, you can see this shows it is nervousness. So it in, it indicates that there is nervousness in this. And the reason you get only one label because you are you are detecting you are doing it as a sentiment analysis task. If you want multiple multiple categories, then you can do it as a sentiment text classification. Um, but in this case, like I'm just doing a sentiment analysis, so I have the I have the category that is the most relevant, and I have the score of the category that is most relevant. So. So let's let's try with a different text. So I'm going to give a different text. Maybe I, I'll say I'm very happy with this channel. OK, and let's see what happens. And then it says it's joy. So 90, 97 percent is the score. So let me say something else. Um, your your content sucks. And let's see what happens. And you can see disgust. Disgust is a feeling, and it is 87%. So you can you can play around with this. You can change a lot of things. Like I adore you, and then let's see what is it. So you can see that now it's it's about love. So when you go back to the model page, you can actually see that this go emotions, this data set, it's been labeled on 58,000 rated comments with 28 emotions. So basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to fit the class. You are trying to classify the text that you're giving into one of these 28 emotions so it's not three four emotions because mo mo most emotion detection model fails because they, they, they just try to pigeonhole your data into pigeonhole your data text into three four emotions which is not how human beings usually express what they feel in the form of a text so this is quite good a comprehensive set of emotions you have got admiration you have got amusement anger annoyance approval sadness remorse relief surprise neutral 
So you have a lot of different things. So for example, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm sorry that the order got delayed. So let's see what happens. And you can see that it's it's about remorse. Like usually when you talk to a customer support agent, so this is the first thing that you usually they would say to calm you down so that you know like the mistake that the company has done doesn't affect you so much. So so this is really comprehensive set of emotion classifications that you have and this that is why this model is a really good option if you want to do emotion classification so now if you want to only the take if you want to only take the label out you can just you can just access the list like this and then take the label out so you can just simply do this thing now the question you might ask me is hey this is this is all good but i'm not going to just give one text and do this emotion detection because most of the times i deal with data frames in my job so most of the times you have sql database most of the time you have like an oracle database so what you might want to do is how to do the same thing when you have a tabular data set so how to do the same thing when you have a data frame so don't worry i've got you covered in the next section which is we're going to import a csv file that has a lot of text where we are going to do the motion classification or emotion detection so first thing first we need to import pandas as pd so because we are going to deal with csv file so let's import pandas as pd and then there is there is this text emotion data that is available that's been uploaded by abhishek karun so we're going to use that text data so i'm going to read it into a large text the object name is large text i don't know why i came up with this name but that's a good name so when i when i see the shape of the large text you can see that okay so this is this is after me changing the size of the large text ideally large text has 400000 let me let me read on it again so ideally you have 400000 i'm sorry you have 40000 rows and four columns and when you see what are the 40000 rows and columns so let me do a head for you so you can see what is in there so you can see there is a tweet id you have the sentiment field because this was already used for a different emotion classification so we're going to ignore that we're going to ignore the author as well so we don't need the first three columns but what are we are interested in is the content the content is a place where the actual tweet is, tweet is mentioned so the the tweet for example says wants to hang out with friends soon funeral ceremony gloomy friday so you you have like a lot of different these kind of tweets which um, which express uh, different emotions so that's what we're going to use to do emotion detection so after we have our data frame in place what i'm going to do is i'm going to just because i'm showing you demo i don't want this to run for a long time i'm going to just filter this data only for 100 rows so i'm filtering this data only for 100 rows and after i filter it if i see the shape the dimension i have 100 rows and i have four columns the rest of the columns are not very important for us we can just keep it in case like if you want to cross reference back to the original data set or if you want to let's say like you're going to join up the different table so i'm just leaving the rest of the column there as it is so the way we're going to do this is after you have this after you have this uh, shortened or subset of the data set data frame what i'm going to do is i'm going to first show you a way how you can use the current emotion this 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 emotion that we have and then detect text uh, detect emotion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i have the large text i have content which is which is this column and i'm going to take only the 10 rows i'm going to say dot apply this apply apply this function on it i'm going to do that and when i do that you can see what's going to happen what's going to happen it's going to return me a list and within the list it, it has got a data a dictionary and within the dictionary, you can see that I've got two components, two elements, like one is a label, one is a score. But what I'm more interested in is only the label part. Um, so there are different ways again to get this thing, but the easiest way I'm going to go is I'm going to create a custom function. I'm going to say cust get emotion label, say probably I should say emotion label. And this function, when you give text, it's going to take the text, apply emotion to it, and then take the first, first, the list, the list, like the first element is like for every row the first element is the, like the first element going inside the list and then get the label out of it so basically what we are trying to do is for all these rows they're trying to get only this middle part only the label okay so when we do this thing let's create this custom function and after i do this thing i'm going to apply instead of applying emotion to this i'm going to apply get emotion label okay so i'm going to apply get emotion label so it's the same thing okay so i'm using label why am I using, uh, sorry, I'm using apply. Why am I using apply? Because I want to apply these functions for every row. So I'm using apply to apply this function for all the rows in a pandas column. So that's what I'm doing. But instead of actually applying the existing function, I'm making a custom function so that I get exactly what I want, which is another 
categorical variable which is just whether it is neutral happy joy desire whatever it is i don't want score i don't want the value name i just want this value field so what i'm doing is i'm creating a custom function which i'm calling it git emotion label it takes text field inside and then it returns the label exactly so if you want to just simply test it out we can do this thing so we can we can use this custom function that we have created and say how terrible d3 is d3.js is okay so i, I i'm this this is this is, it says it's fear um maybe maybe the, it didn't get the emotion right but um it's 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 me um, you know making fun of d3 so may, maybe something else we can try we can say um india played very well very well and the fans were amused okay let's see what it says it says amusement okay fine so we just got one final word that is what is what is the emotion so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to now apply the same thing this 10 10 rows and i'm going to see how it works okay so i have to apply get emotion label and then you can see that the output is like we have got 10 um sorry nine in this case uh neutral joy 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 so we have all these things in place now what i want to do is i want to append this as a new column to the existing data frame this is how my current data frame looks like i've got four columns i want to add a new column here says emotion and then we're going to have these values in place there so i'm going to take the large con text so right now we have 100 rows 100 rows i'm going to apply apply get emotion label and applying it on it so you can see at the end of this process it would take a couple of seconds uh, after at the end of this process you would see all these all these categories the labels in this particular column which is large underscore text uh, is the data frame name and the column name is emotion after we get that what we are going to do is we are going to simply look at the distribution of the emotions and then finally we can all be happy about the programming that we just did so let's let's see that it's still running maybe i want to show you something more before that um while it is running i'll just keep the data frame ready here so there is there is a google collab trick that a lot of people do not know what is it so this is now completed right so when you look at a data frame when you look at a data frame on google collab you would see you would see something that looks like this right when you see a data frame you can you can click this and what this does is this is like a magic it converts this data frame into an interactive table so let me click this thing and you can see what's going to happen so oops yep so at this point you can see that it has been converted into an interactive data frame what does it mean it means let's say you want to filter only the data data the rows that have neutral as an emotion or let's say desire as an emotion i can filter it and say okay emotion should be desire and you can see interactively you get to see desire so let's say i want to see only joy you can see interactively only joy let's say i want to see sadness do i have sadness yes we have we have sadness so we can we can basically convert our pandas data frame into an interactive table so if you are not aware of this thing this is a very useful trick that's that's quite helpful if you want to if you want to quickly interactively look at something that is available on your data frame so that's done but what we have is like we have got the emotion so we are set to do an emotion distribution of our data data frame so for that i'm going to use c1 so c1 is quite helpful for me because i don't have to separately value count and then do a plot in pandas so i'm going to use a count plot and i'm going to say my data frame is large text and um, my my column name is emotion so i i could have done x is equal to emotion but you know what happens when the then the labels overlap so that's why i'm just flipping the coordinates by saying y is equal to emotion and then i'm setting the title saying emotion distribution so at this point i have a very nice bar chart that says what is the emotion distribution of the data set that i've got so you can see that most of the most of the texts that are available on my data set is neutral but you can also see wide range of emotions from joy desire approval remorse love um, sadness amusement confusion disapproval a lot of these emotions now you might ask me okay this is all well and good so i've got the code in place where do you think that this might be useful this is a very valid question right so every time you learn a machine learning trick every time you learn a new nlp trick or whatever it is you need to be very clear about where do you want to use this thing so where do you want to use this thing so as we have used a twitter data set tweet data set you can be very clear that this is this is a good exercise to do it on social media data set like you, you you could be running a company you could be running an organization you could be running a product you want to see what kind of things what kind of stuff people talk about you on social media so that's that's one where you want one place where you want to see emotion distribution or emotion of what people talk about you online reputation management is a good place for you to look at but 
if you want to see a very impactful place in the business where this could be helpful this is quite helpful when your customer support agent has conversation with your cons uh, with your actual customer you want to see how their conversation actually goes how does it start does it start from anger and go to joy does it start from joy to go to anger so this is a very important aspect like there are a lot of different metrics in customer support for you to for you to say how the conversation ended so you have nps net promoter score you have csat customer satisfaction score but none of these take the entire context into picture it's just a final metric that can give you some score but this this method that we just do it to look at the distribution uh, it can be quite helpful for you to see the entire distribution of how the conversation went how did it start how did it go it can help you improve your sop of your customer support system so if this is something that interests you please go ahead and let me know in the comments otherwise i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for listening to me happy programming